open up our Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. Amen. The mantra and the model for our year is more grace for you in 2022 because we've got work to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to learn, hallelujah, about the grace of God. Amen. Amen. About finding, seeking God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 5 through 10. A little bit of a long read, but it'll bless you in the end. It says this. And he said unto them, this is Jesus teaching his disciples about the grace of God. He said, he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, the nerve, the guts, the gall to ask, he will rise up and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask. <laughs> Hallelujah. I say unto you, ask. Let me say it again. I say unto you, ask. Hallelujah. The title of today's message, you've heard it before, but you got to have the nerve to ask. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King. Hallelujah. And as we're learning about, hallelujah, receiving more grace because there's more to do in 2022, look at somebody and tell them, you got to have the nerve to ask. You got to have the nerve to ask. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You gotta have the nerve to ask. Amen. Amen. I love this story because this story lets me know a little bit about grace, a little bit about intercessory prayer, a little bit about, hallelujah, what it is that sometimes keeps us from receiving everything that we're believing God for. Jesus said, what kind of friend do you think I am? Because a friend, if they had a friend that was in need, would come and ask a friend things that seem inconvenient. A friend, a good friend, would come to a good friend. And ask them for things that are large, that are uncomfortable. I'm talking about real friends. You know, you, you know, we, we most of us have hundreds of Facebook friends. Oh, you <laughs> but when you talk about real friends that you can come to and expect them to help you when you're going through, you can probably count them on one, maybe two hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus said, which of you would have a friend that you couldn't come to at midnight and ask them for something inconvenient and not expect them to do it? You would expect a friend to help you if you were trying to help a friend. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And you'd have the importunity, mm -hmm. the unmitigated guts, gall to ask. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't ask anybody for just anything. That's right. But there's some people, amen, friends, parents, you would come to them and ask them for things that are 
inconvenient and expect them to do it. You have the nerve to ask. But we've got a friend, hallelujah, and a heavenly father that we can come to, hallelujah, with the boldness, the Bible says, coming boldly before the throne of grace, boldly coming before the throne and asking God, hallelujah, the things that we need. Hallelujah. Because he's our friend and because he's our father. We should know that we can ask. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we look at the last couple of verses of scripture that I did not read, verses 9 and 10, I believe it is, mm -hmm. it says, And I say unto you, Ask, shall be given you. Mm -hmm. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For everyone mm -hmm. The asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knock, it shall be open. Hallelujah. All you got to do is have the nerve to ask and know how to ask. And for those who've never heard this message before, ask is an acronym. Amen. It's A- S and K. A stands for ask. And so if we're going to come to God, have the boldness and the importunity to come to God, hallelujah, we need to know how to ask. Amen? And we ask according to the word. Amen? Amen. We discovered last week hallelujah, that we ask according to the parameters of what he already promised because the only prayers he answered are his own. Amen. Hallelujah. We learn from the book of Exodus where the Bible says that God said every place that the soles of your feet tread within the parameters of where I told you to be, that I'll give to you. He said, if you ask according to the promises, every promise in the book is yes and amen. Yes. amen. You just got to ask according to the promises. Jesus gives us the same teaching. Matter of fact, we can stay in Luke's gospel chapter, chapter 11. Verse 11 says this. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? And if you ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? And if we ask for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If we being evil know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more Shall our Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to us that ask? How much more will the Father which is in heaven give us what we need when we ask? Now I love that he points out the fact that it, in Mark's, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, he said, how much more will he give good things to them that ask? In Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, he says, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, gives us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation on what to ask for. Amen? Amen. Amen. That brings us to the second letter of ask, which is S. S stands for seek. If we're going to learn how to ask, not only do we ask according to the B-I-B-L-E, hallelujah, the Bible, the book that God gave to you and me as an outline and a reference, an instruction manual and a road map, hallelujah, on how to get to good success and what he has for us. He says, I also give you the Holy Spirit that will teach you how to seek according to God's Way. We ask according to God's word and we seek according 
to God's way, trying to see what way is God going to use to bless me? What way is God going to come through, hallelujah, as an avenue to answer my prayer? Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. This is what it says in verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. As we're asking and seeking to see how is it that God is going to bless me. Hallelujah. I have to be looking to see what avenue is God going to use. Amen. And he said, I'll do a new thing. I'll do it in, 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 in an unconventional way. I'll bring rivers in the desert. I'll bring ways through the wilderness. God says, I'll do it in a way that is unmistakably, hallelujah, undisguisably me. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So we got to be seeking to see, is this, how, is this God's way of doing it? Mm -hmm. We've been taught by life to be suspicious. We've been taught by people to be skeptical. We've been taught by the past to be hesitant to believe when things are going our way. We think it's too good to be God. Mm. Or it's too good to be true. Right. When the truth of the matter is we got to learn how to seek God's way and say it's too good not to be God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I'm talking about looking for God's avenue yeah. of how he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm not going to take you into it, but in the book of Exodus, it describes the priestly uniform of prayer. And on the priestly uniform of prayer, there were two items, there, but they're always put together. It's the Uram and the Thumim. Mm. And it was almost like cast throwing dice or playing rock, paper, scissors. The priest sometimes in order to find the will of God would cast the urine and the Thumim to see what is it that God is saying. What is it that God is doing. And see the Urim, that means light and revelation. Hallelujah. That's what we get from the Holy Spirit. We get a revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. On what it is God is trying to do. The Thumim, that's like chance and circumstance. Where what seems like an accident is really the providential hand of God doing what he said he was going to do. Amen? Amen. 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 The, the Hebrew word is pagah, to strike the mark. Amen? It means to light upon. Amen? It seemed like it was by accident, but God, hallelujah, had it planned all the time. There are times that things just accidentally come upon you and you think this is too good to be true. No, you got to switch the way you think about it. Hallelujah. And see and say this is too good not to be God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You got to seek to see is this how God is going to bless me. Amen. Going into every opportunity thinking this is a possibility. We are possibility believers, amen? Hallelujah. So we got to believe, hallelujah, that every good thing that we come upon is a possibility. Hallelujah. It's possibly how God is going to bless me. Yeah. Amen? amen? If it's not, God will reveal it. Amen? He'll show you, amen, that if somebody's trying to do something to twist you up and trip you up or cause you to fall into some type, type of get-rich-quick quick scheme or something, he'll reveal it. Amen. But you got to go into yeah. opportunities yeah. believing yeah. that God ah. can do anything. Anything. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Seek to see. Is this how God's going to do it? Is this how God's going to do it? Is that how God's going to do it? Not closing your eyes and your ears to the possibilities even before you hear them. Mm. Before you see them. Yeah. Because of past situations that cause you to put your guard up. Yeah. We've all experienced it. Oh, yeah. We've all experienced things that cause us to be a little bit leery of people. A little bit leery of what's possible. But we've got to be, the Bible says, like a child. And have childlike faith. Children know how to trust. Children know how to believe. That's how we have to seek. To see, is this the way God is going to do it? Always believing that it's a possibility. I spent a little longer there than I want to, but the last letter of S A S K is K for knock. You got to know how to knock. Knock to prove God's will, to prove God's perfect will. Amen. Amen. Let's go somewhere. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Ask according to the word, according to the B-I-B-L-E. Amen. That's the book of promises that God gave to you and me. And he's not going to give you something that goes against his word. Come on now. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. People... I've heard that people say, try the spirits by the spirit. You try the spirit by the word. By the word. By the word. Because God, the spirit, is the one that inspired the writing of the word. And God, by his spirit, is not going to say something now that contradicts what he said then. He he Amen? Hallelujah. So, Everything that God says is going to agree with his word. Ask according to the word. Hallelujah. If it doesn't line up with the word, your prayer is out of order. Come on. Amen. Preach. Hallelujah. Preach in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask according to the book. Yes. Hallelujah. Ask according to the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ask for somebody else's spouse. Amen. Don't ask for somebody else's car. Amen. Don't ask for somebody else's building, somebody else's business. Hallelujah. Don't ask for something that's going to cause God to have to be put in a position to hurt somebody else to help you. But ask according to the word. Seek a court. Hallelujah. Seek for God's will. Seek. Hallelujah. With an open mind and an open spiritual eye to see is this possibly how God is going to bless me. Glory. Glory. If God is doing a new thing, I want to see it. I want to know it. I want to recognize it. Hallelujah. Even if it's causing God, even if it's God making a way in the wilderness. Because he can't do it. Even if it's God, hallelujah, making a river in the desert. Hallelujah. Because he can't do it. I don't want to close the door on God's possibilities. I'm looking to see if this is how God is going to bless me. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to knock, hallelujah, to prove God's will, his perfect will. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. Present your bodies. Present your what? Bodies. Present your bodies. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. For people that say I'm with you in spirit. Hallelujah. But if I need some work done. Hallelujah. I'd rather have your body. Amen. Hallelujah. If I'm in a scrap and I need some backup. Amen. It's good to have somebody that's with you in spirit. But it's even better to have somebody that will present their body. body. Amen. God says I want your body. Amen. Amen. 
God says, I want your body. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? The good will of God, we learned in previous messages, is what God has already done. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness nor a shadow of turning. When God created everything, he said it was good. He created the light and said it was good. He separated the waters from the waters and the firmaments from the firmaments and said it was good. He created the animals, fish and fowl and said it was good. He created the stars and planets, set them in their orbit, put them on their axis and said it was good. He even created man and said it was good good. And then he finished by creating woman and said it was very good. Very good. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> I done gave that brother somebody to feed off of. Amen. It's going to help him to do better. Everything good comes from God. The good will of God is what he has done. The acceptable will of God is what he tells us to do. I know some translations say the permissive will of God. But everything that God permits is not acceptable. All things are lawful but not expedient. God permits people to go to hell if that's what they so choose. After years and years and times and times of wooing of the Holy Ghost and calling and knocking on their, the door of their heart, if they so choose to go to hell, God says, I respect your decision enough to let you do it. But that's not acceptable. What's acceptable is doing what God tells you to do. Anything less than doing what God tells me to do is unacceptable. And it's the good will that God has already done plus the acceptable will of what he tells me to do that it equals the perfect will of God, which is me entering into what he has for me. Because of what he did and what he told me to do, that positions me under the spout where his glory is already be, being poured out. I prove, hallelujah, that God has an open window of heaven assigned to me when I do what he tells me to do. I prove the perfect will of God. What does that have to do with knocking, preacher? Well, my Bible says this. God is a God that opens doors that no man can shut and shuts doors that no man can open. So if the door is shut, how do I know whether or not God will open it? I have to knock. That's good. I have to do the practical application of doing what I can do to see if the door will open up for me. Amen? Amen. 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 I have to do what I'm supposed to do to see if God will open up the door for me. And I prove the good will of God. I prove the acceptable will of God. I prove the perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Where God's blessings are manifested and evident upon my life. I prove it if I knock. Go and do the practical application of what I'm supposed to do. I remember I gave this example years ago. If I really, truly believe that God is going to give me 
a job. I'm going to go and fill out an application. I'm going to go to the interview with my clothes clean, my teeth brushed, my hair combed. I'm going to make eye contact. I'm going to give him a firm handshake. I'm going to come there with some confidence. Why? Because I believe God's going to do this. Amen. Why would I come up there like I don't believe I deserve it or I don't expect to get it? I'm going to do what's practical within my ability to see if this is the door that God is going to open for me. That's right. Amen. I'm going to start doing the practical. If, I'm go, if I believe God is going to help me start a business, I'm going to build a business plan. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. Amen? I'm going to do what I can do to prove that God will do what he said he will do. Amen. So that I don't find myself when the door of open opportunity is open for me, I'm ill-equipped to walk into it. Amen. Amen. I've heard him say, "Fortune favors the prepared." Amen. 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 I believe that people often miss opportunities that God opens doors for because they're not ready, mm. because they don't do the practical application of sin. Will the door open? Knock. And I'll say this to you. No matter what you encounter, no matter how many closed doors and shut doors you run into, don't stop knocking. knocking. Right. Amen. Amen. Keep doing yes. what you believe you're supposed yes. to do, expecting God to yes. open the door for you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's how you prove. The goodwill of God. Amen? Amen. And the reason I say prove, the reason the Bible says prove, there's a difference between test and prove. Mm -hmm. You test what you don't know. Right. You prove what you do know. Amen. You prove what you do know. Amen? The scientific method, the difference between a hypothesis and a theory is that I'm willing to prove what I say I think I believe. If you're not willing to put some action behind what you say you think and believe, then it's just a hypothesis. It's just a belief. And you're not really asking. You're not really praying. You're probably just wishing. Jesus. Have the nerve to ask. Yes, yes. And asking not only means asking verbally according to the word. It means seeking to see how is God going to do this for me. Seeking to see God's way. And it means knocking. Doing the practical application of what it takes to Calls a closed door to open. You'll never know if a closed door is going to open if you don't knock. Do the practical. Do what you're supposed to do and expect the door to open for you. That's how you prove the goodwill of God. Amen? Amen. That's how you prove what you say you believe. This is an example of it in Malachi chapter 3. We're familiar with it. It says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove. Not test. But you know this thing is going to work. Prove me herewith saith the Lord of hosts that I will not open you up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Hallelujah. That sounds like an open door to me. 
Hallelujah. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And I shall not, you shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed, and ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. All this happened because you proved what you say you believe. Yes, yes sir. We say we believe that God supplies our needs. Then prove it. We say that we believe God will answer our prayers. Then prove it. Do what God tells you to do and expect Him to open the door for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Prove it. Prove that God will open a window, a door, an opportunity for you. Thank you, Father. How do you prove that you believe God will do what he said he will do? Yes. I'm reminded of when Jesus said to one of his disciples in so many words, he said, you haven't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. He said, from this moment forward, you're going to see doors open. You're going to see ways made. You're going to see, hallelujah, heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And I say to you, when you knock, when you do what you can do and expect God to do what you can't do when you do your best and expect God to do the rest when you do the practical and expect God to open a window up for you you're saying hallelujah you haven't seen nothing yet hallelujah watch and see what God is going to open up for me hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. hallelujah thank you Jesus if you have the importunity the guts the nerve to ask. to ask. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you.